Hi. So let's resume what we have left in the previous video. In the previous video, we have done analysis on only on well melts without the structure without the structural members such as gussets or plates or sheet metal between them. Now let us see how to do analysis while incorporating all those. Now <coughs> I have the structure in front of me. I have made slight changes. Whenever you are going to uh, analyze with cassettes or sheet metal, always make sure that you make the elements intersect and you leave no spaces in between them. You can see over here, I have tried not to leave any spaces or gaps even though how small it might be they should appear they are touching face to face no one you're fully satisfied you can go ahead and uh, this is the previous analysis let me delete this and make a new one a new study and i go to static So as you can see when you have just the structure it automatically goes to beam elements if you open this you see this slide beam bar which is a representation that this particular structure or member is going to be considered as a beam element now when we are going to put the gussets you the gusset will not be a beam element analysis cannot be done with both beam element and a solid element so you either have to convert everything to beam element or to solid element solidworks use tetrahedon mesh tetrahedon solid element uh, for the solid structure now obviously the cassettes cannot be treated as beams we are going to do this analysis as uh, by taking the solid mesh as in tetrahedon solid element now let me make a gusset there are actually two ways of making a gusset or a plate the first one is automatically in the features of SOLIDWORKS. You can go into insert and go to elements and select cassette. It will ask you to input the supporting faces. I want to guess it in between these two members. Select this and the adjacent one. It automatically creates a default one. You can go ahead and change the dimension as you want. You can even go to trapezoidal or can have a bottom something like this. Let, let, let us leave this to a simple triangular gusset. Now there are options over here. Let me go through this. This is the thickness from where you want to start your extrusion. extrusion. For example, if you have select, if you want a gusset of 5 mm. Because you are selected, you have selected this surface. It will extrude, extrude from that surface. Now, if you don't want, you want it to be equally in between these two, these two lines. You can hit both sides like this. Now, now the location will select where you want a cassette to be placed. As you can see over here, this is placed at the starting point or the leftmost point if we select this 
it comes to the center. You can see this difference. You can e even have it as an offset if we don't want it to be at the corner most or the left most you can hit this offset and select and input your desired displacement from the center line and you can run it. Let me leave it at least in the center. Hit OK. As you can see it has created a nice guess. It. Let me predefine the element of this structure as plain carbon steel. While doing the analysis, you can, this analysis supports only for one single structure because you are considering this as a one complete assembly. If in case you wanted to have the material of the cassette differently from your primary material, you can create a new assembly, you can manually insert this cassette and mate it to the faces. That way could, you could have different material for cassette and for structure. For now, let us assume the cassette and the beams are of same material. The structure with, with the analysis which I have considered last time. Now, it still considers this structure as beam. You can see the nodes. Nodes are indication that it is going to be con it is going to consider it as the beams. But you have this thing in between. When you open part cut list, this is one solid body. Let me open all. Let me expand this. Okay. So when you hit, when you give your normal values of connections and loads it will give you a dialog box saying this member solid body 8 cassette is redundant you can exclude that from the analysis but that's not the point we want to include in the analysis so that we can we can show the effect of cassettes as you can see from theory uh, from, from theory of cassette and from mechanics subject Cassettes play a vital role in distribution of stress around the edges. So, to do this analysis as complete solid, we are going to select or convert this beam elements as solid. You have to select create is as solid. And go on selecting all the beam elements which it has to by default taken. By default all the weldments in the analysis are taken as beams. Now what I have done is I have considered everything as a solid body. I have already considered the material properties. Now I will go to connections. Now this part this feature is different from the previous analysis because in previous analysis the lines or the nodes were connected together. Okay, why didn't this update? Yeah, okay, that's gone. So now you don't have those nodes. In the previous analysis in beam, all the structures were connected by a central axis, and the central axis was connected. To the nodes, those nodes were shown by the wallet, wallet dots. But however, in this solid, they are not connected by the central axis or beams. They are connected from face to face. For this, you, it is this is 
closer to the actual analysis of welding. Now for the analysis you have to join all these members together or else they will while doing analysis they will all fly off being dangling state. So to connect all these members go to connection take contact set automatically find contacts select this with this and again select find contact you see there are four contact points I can put this into analysis by creating contact So, this method might take a while. The easy way around this is to actually create a component set. Component contact. The type of contact we are going to select is bonded. We select non-penetration contact when two bodies are just in contact with each other. They might be translating with respect to each other or sliding but here as we know it is they are all welded so we would want to have bonded allow penetration option is usually used in flexible material analysis for example rubber etc let's select bonded and go to go to this and let's select all the materials. Okay, so yeah. global contact, compatible mesh. Now it, this creates one complete contact relation for all, between all the members. This relieves a little bit of time as in you don't want to, you don't have to initially go ahead and select all the members. Now let's fix the geometry. In the previous we have selected the nodes but over here we are free to select any of the sites. This gives us flexibility to select few areas not the complete not the complete uh, face. You can uh, you can have mounting holes or plates where the loads uh, where the structure is constrained. For simplicity let's assume this one is connected over here. See this. Okay. Now uh, again, this have uh, different fixture types. It has fixed geometry. It has rollers, as you do in stress stress members. It has hinges as you would be doing in uh, you know, suspension analysis etc. I have selected this face to be fixed. I would put an external load. Uh, let us put something like this here. Again <coughs> We can select <coughs> we can select force sorry we can select force or a torque value now if we if we have selected the face obviously uh, that's what is the direction we be normal or in the anti-normal direction by doing the reverse let's take this and let's take the value as 
for example, do dead ninja or something. Before that, before going further, I think uh, when you have a non-uniform distribution of load, you would want to go with this, and, uh, with with this uh, non-uniform distribution. What it does is, if you have a equation of force which you would want to put on a uh, on a member, which varies with x and y coordinates, it's this is what you would do. You would first create a coordinate system from where you want. For example, you want you want to vary the load, vary the constraint, or vary, sorry, vary the torque or the force along this uh, member, and it varies along the x and y coordinates. You would put you would create a coordinate system like this, and put the equation and coefficient so that it would take care of all your values. For now, let us have uniform distributor of load on that member. Okay, so we are good to go. Let's hit run. Oh. Okay, so let me cast it. It's saying at least two bodies are interfering. Do you want to check the interference? Let me quickly check this. Okay. So, what are the two bodies? Okay. So, it is trim extend eight and trim extend eleven. So where is this? Okay. Oh yeah, that's where the problem is. See, uh, this actually, this member actually is coinciding with this element, with this member. So I might have to do one more trim to let's see if this works. And the trimming body is this. Okay, that looks too far. Okay, this would do. I think this would be good. Yeah, this would be good. Oh, oops, sorry. I didn't select completely. Okay. One quick advice if you ever have a lot of members on one point uh, it usually creates a problem while doing analysis so I would suggest you to have an offset if you are if you ever having two to three members coinciding at a point take two mem two uh, take two members a little bit away from the point of intersection and two members away so you will have a simple uh, geometry to measure So I have rectified the errors which was interrupting our mesh. Now create a mesh. Let's hit mesh and run. As you can see, it's meshing without any possible errors here. Even if it doesn't, you just have to go back and see where the problem lies and just have to correct it. Usually the problem is when two bodies are not intersecting each other or they are overlapping or you know the bodies are not are pretty far away from each other. Okay, so we have the analysis complete and the analysis is shown. 
before going ahead looking at the results let us let us see which kind of stress we are going to look at this is a von Macy stress which is commonly used obviously you have other stresses also normal shear principal stress uh, but one misses takes in account and uh, this is what everybody suggest in analysis you can have the deformed shape to be actual shape like this to scale or you can exaggerate it to suit your needs chart option shows where the maximum and the where the minimum stress is you can play around with the with the range and see floating that makes a lot of sense okay. and make this to MPA <coughs> okay so let me have the okay so let me hide this values oh, let me, it's easier for understanding okay so we are applying the force in this direction and the body is constrained of this member as you can see the force ranges from 0 to point 2.3 mp that's pretty low because the amount of magnitude of force we have put in as you can see where the members are stressing out more and where they are not. If you, if you ever would want to run the animation, you can right click and just wait. Take some time and yeah, this is how it will look. can see this structure this beam is working a little bit hard to make the street structure stand in this position you can have subsequently displacement plots and you can you have all lot of you have various plots stress and um, which we have just seen the displacement the strain we have the design inside if we would want to put some conditions the fatigue check plot uh, if we have a repeated kind repeated loads for duration of time it would check uh, the fatigue of the component factor of safety as it is so this is how it is if we are going to put the analysis under a solid body now let's go back and see the other types other way of putting this cassette the method which we have just used uses the automatically you know, inbuilt feature that is cassette sometimes we don't want to have a cassette which is triangle in that case what would we want to do is we want to create a custom cassette of our shape it might be connecting three members like this or four or five usually it varies uh, let us have a circular a, a hemi, the ha, quarter circle cassette over here which is obviously not inbuilt feature we can just get triangle not a half circle one so what we'd want to do is if we want to have the cassette in bit in mid plane of these two members in that case we would want to have a plane there example you can go to reference geometry and make a plane <coughs> and select these two sides that creates a mid plane if you don't want to have it in the middle as we have did over here you want to have in the on one of the sides you just create a plane or you could just directly go there on the face and just hit sketch let me make this normal view the 
this is phenomenal and uh, <coughs> this is the circular one take a three point circle and now you would never want your cassette to be fully inserted of your structure that's right uh, you would either want to touch on the first surface on the faces as we have done in the previous cassette now because you are we are considering cassette on one of the face let's have it somewhere here which connects these two members good to go so you have a sketch that is drawn on this face and you would obviously want to extrude on the other side of the face and extrude select your thickness in my case let me select 3mm and I would check this option of merge results now it merges this body with respective bodies if you don't want it to be merged you can obviously in the analysis you can go it have it bonded type of connection but let us have merged select all bodies and hit ok you see you have a nice water shape guess it Go back to my static, things have really changed here so the mesh would not be valid anymore and hopefully contact is still there. I would really, you would really want it to refresh it once again. Global contact. Okay, fixed is same, force is same. Okay, so only the mesh is different. Let's create a mesh and run. mesh got completed there uh, so we have covered how to do analysis on beams without gussets uh, using elements that would be the beam analysis and we have also covered how to do analysis by using sheet metal or gussets and elements the only difference is on this analysis we would want to convert all our existing weldments to solids okay we have a pretty neat analysis done here as you can see there's not much difference this this gussets makes but yeah it does relieve the stress of the of this edge uh, and uh, thoughtful placement of cassettes actually decreases a lot of stress from the members they help to reduce the stress concentrations on the edges and really makes this value come down okay uh, that's that's all for this analysis thank you